As Lucas said, a really exciting day for our club yesterday to, to secure both Jason and also Junior Rioli. I just want to take some time, firstly, just to um, you know, set the scene on a couple of things. Um, yeah, clearly, it was a deal that you know, four clubs had to be comfortable with, so we're, we're pleased that we're able to get the clubs involved to, to, for all of those clubs to get what they wanted out of it. Um, a, a courageous decision for Jason to put his hand up and say that he wanted to come back, and specifically to Port Adelaide. Um, you know, I'm sure that he'll be thankful of the support that his family has shown him through this period, and also, you know, importantly, his manager Ben Williams, who um, was you know, really strong throughout. Um, and just an acknowledgement from our perspective to Jason Cripps, um, our list manager as well, who's done a, a fantastic job to, to get us to the point where we've been able to secure, as I say, both. Jason and Junior. So we'll open it up to questions. I'm sure you've got a heap of me and uh, a few more of Jace. So over to you, Hazy. Um, <laughs> Sir, do you, how, how big is this for the football club? As I said, it's a really, really exciting time, you know, to enter the trade period with the potential to, to trade in you know, last year's number one pick, a guy who, you know, we really liked in his draft year and who we think has got a massive role to play at this club into the future. You know, you, these opportunities don't come along very often. And so for us to be able to secure Jason here, you know, was fantastic. And, you know, we, we've got some pretty good feedback from our, from our club over the last, you know, what is it, 24 hours now that uh, would suggest that our people are really excited about it too. Is it the most exciting deal, I guess, Port's um, done since luring back Gavin Wayne in a way? Yeah, I mean, look, that'll be for other people to judge. It's certainly, you know, the biggest deal of my time at the footy club. So I'm certainly happy to say that, um, you know, from my standpoint, as to, to be able to secure someone of Jason's calibre and, and character, um, but also on the same day to, to get a guy in like Junior Rioli, who we had, you know, targeted uh, as, a, as a player who can help us in a part of the ground that we haven't been as good as we would have liked him. So... Um, yeah, as I say, really, really exciting uh, day for the club yesterday. What is the price you paid from a draft perspective, say, about the player that you got? Well, I think we've all acknowledged that, that Jason is a generational type talent. Um, you know, I have heard some of the, the rhetoric over the last 24 hours about, you know, Port Adelaide being all in. And, and look, you know, our reality right now is that we want it to be massively better than what we were last year. But... It shouldn't be lost that you know, we've had the third number of first round picks in the last three drafts. So, I mean, don't kid yourselves that we're not also planning for the future. This is a 19 year old guy who you know, we hope can play for our footy club for the next 15 years. Um, but the reality is, um, you know, we've, we've had to give up what we thought was more than fair and reasonable in the circumstances. Can you take us that it's behind what, what a mega trade was? I haven't really seen many of them. I guess, how did this kind of come about? How did you get it done, especially when on Saturday when the April? for the future first and second to be traded from you? Yeah, look, again, a lot has been made of, of that request. That was literally an email to Andrew Dillon who, at five o'clock on Friday who responded on Saturday morning and said no. And so we moved on pretty quick. So, yeah, the, the mega deal that you guys have been dreaming up, um, you know, has taken many iterations over the last, you know, four or five days and pleased that the club's got it back off of the ground after you know, the AFL suggested that we couldn't do what we'd asked them. Um, but as I say, that was just one question and we got a clear answer and we moved on. Um, so, yeah, just, just really pleased. Was there any, I guess, danger given, you know, all the moving parts that it might have fallen over at some point? Or was it, were you always confident that it would have put those down again? Uh, look, we, we entered the trade period really hopeful, clearly. Um, but then the four clubs who were involved, and there are a, a, another couple who were involved originally, uh, we all had a shared sense of wanting to achieve an outcome that we all wanted. You know, clearly North Melbourne wanted as good a you know, compensation for, for Jason as they could. West Coast had their own motives. GWS wanted to get up to pick one. Um, so we all entered the, the, the period wanting something to get done. We were glad to be able to tie it all together. Who drives that? Like, are you the first person picks up a phone and says, let's get four teams on the phone? Or who, what minds come up with this sort of thing? How does it work? Better minds than mine. <laughs> um, so, I mean, for us, it's Jason Cripps who, who leads that. I mean, Jason and I talk 
regularly through this type of period, but he's, he's the guy who is doing you know, the work at the front end with the other clubs. As I say, you know, I think that a lot is made about people thinking the trade period is adversarial, and some of it's not. It's actually a group of people coming together and trying to find their own outcomes to whatever their problem might be. So you know, here we had four, four guys who you know, are experienced people who were able to put a deal together that, um, as, as I think everyone has acknowledged, was actually a win-win for all of the parties involved. So broadly, I'm going to ask you a question about the crows, but ranking turns up down the road from a South Australian perspective. How exciting is this for South Aussie footy? I've got no, nothing to say about the crows. I, certainly, I'm pumped to have Jason Horn Francis here, um, a generational talent, fantastic guy who wants to be as good as he possibly can be. Now, you know, we, we want to put him in our environment and see how he blossoms. I'm sure that he'll become a better player. Uh, I know that he'll make people better around him as well, which is probably the next level of what people haven't, might have not spoken about so far is, yeah, Jason's an outstanding person, an outstanding player, but he has the capability to make people around him better as well. Jason's had some, I guess, publicised challenges at North Melbourne through the season. I guess, what are you confident about Port Adelaide's environment that, you know, that you can improve and get to work on this? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm mindful Jason's actually sitting next to me, <laughs> so um, I don't want to talk for him the whole day, but... Um, Tell, tell me which 19-year-old in their past hasn't had some um, moments that they might want to have approached differently. I certainly have, Simon, I'm sure you have. Um, you know, he's a guy who um, you know, had a lot of scrutiny on him um, at a club that, you know, I'm not talking out of school by saying that they were unsettled this year. Um, he's got a chance to come to a, probably a more stable club, maybe with players around him that might be able to help him more. Uh, and you know we'll, we'll see the fruits of that over the next you know, period of time. How does it feel, Jason, to be a full player? Um, yeah, it's unreal. Um, you know, playing for the club that um, your dad played for, and coming to a club that's been um, you know, quite su successful through the years, and um, just the culture of it, um, I'm really excited to get stuck into. Yeah. Talk us through how it all happened. It feels like it moved very quickly in the last couple of weeks, from your perspective. Um, I mean, yeah, I turned my phone off for a, for a week or so. Um, you know, it was kind of, as we know, it was a big, big thing. And, um, you know, I, was, I got a lot of reassurance from, um, you know, Benny, my manager, um, that, that he was pretty confident. So that made me really confident. Um, so, yeah, I kind of just sat back and kind of relaxed. What changed for you? Because it felt like you were prepared to set out your, your deal in the final year at North. Was there a, a, a point that you remember where you were like, no, nah, I really want to come home this time? Uh, look, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big family person and um, I love my family. and um, I just feel like um, having my family and friends around me, it's going to um, create that environment that I can play my best footy. And, um, you know, that's, what, that's where I want to get to, be the, be the best player I can be. And um, I think coming to um, a club like Port Adelaide and having my family and friends around me is really going to help me. So, yeah. Did the issues with Alistair Clarkson's kind of going through at the moment, did that have any bearing on your decision? No, I've, I've got nothing to do with um, you know, that investigation, so... What changed for you then, Chase? You say you're a family man, I remember reckon last year you slept in your North Guernsey and you were loving it, you're ready to commit to that challenge. Was it just a year away that sort of made you realise that? Yeah, I think I think so. I think, um, like I said, big family person. Just um, love being around my family, and um, you know, I'm really grateful for North giving me the opportunity that they gave me. Um, you know, I couldn't couldn't be happier um, for what they what they gave me. So I'm really thankful for them. And um, yeah, look, I'm I'm just yeah really keen to be back in SA. I was, sorry, obviously you can't talk about the investigation, but given there were so many balls up in the air and the uncertainty, did that make it harder to see what next year looked like for you as a North player? Um, yeah, look, I just I, I wanted to um, make sure that I was in a stable environment, um, you know, coming to this year, and and I think um, a lot of people know it, it, it might be another unstable, another sta unstable year um, at, at at North. So um, we just thought um, coming back home to a to a great club like Port Adelaide would be would be best for me. You're already the number one pick, I guess, but you 
get more screwed to me now that you, you know, sort of moved back to Port Adelaide, you know, you're in LA fish boy. Are you, are you kind of ready for, you know, the increased scrutiny that you're going to get now? Um, yeah, I, th I think so. Um, I think uh, what I went through last year was a lot of people saying to me it's probably the hardest you'll go through. So I think, yeah, I'll be pretty ready, ready for it. And I'm just going to try, um, you know, play the best footy I can be, play and earn the respect of, um, you know, my new teammates and, and staff and coaching staff around me. So, um, yeah, I think I'll be, I'll be ready. You met with both clubs. Why did you choose Port over the Crows? Um, oh, look. Crow, you know, Crows, they really, they really, they really impressed, um, you know, me and me and our family and, and, you know, obviously Port did as well. And we just think, you know, I had that kind of emotional connection with, with Port Adelaide, um, you know, with Dad playing there. And um, he's kind of brung me up the Port way, um, you could say. So it was kind of, um, it, was in, it was in my blood to come here. And, um, you know, I'm really excited and really keen. Do you ask Josh for the, Josh Stephen for the number eight jersey that came in for? Oh, I haven't haven't thought much about that yet. Um, yeah, we'll just kind of wait and see how it goes. How's, how's Bash feeling? Pretty happy. He's over the moon. Yeah, him and you know all my family. But yeah, especially him. He's he's over the moon. He can't be happier for me. So he's really excited. What was that moment like? When you told him, or Ben told you it was it was done. What was that moment like? Um, I reckon he almost teared up. I had to I rang him on the phone and, and told him why he's at work. And um, yeah, he was super happy and. Um, yeah, he was. He almost. He was probably tearing up. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's been tough for you this last, well, probably year. There's been a lot of talk about you. A lot of people speculating on your mental state, the sort of character you are, whether you're fit to be a number one pick, whether you're fit to be interstate, and now talk that you've moved. What's that mean for a 19-year-old kid? How's that? Been? Yeah. Look, it's it's obviously been tough, and you know, there's been the challenge, challenges throughout the year, and um, you know, on my part, I haven't probably haven't done everything right as well. So, um, and look as. As a um, 18 year old kid moving out from home to Melbourne, it was it was tough and I had my challenges and um, yeah, I probably didn't get re get everything right. So, um, but yeah, it was it was obviously a tough year. Um, but look, I, th I think it's going to help me help me in the long run. Do you think you have a point to prove now, rightly or wrongly? People say you know, giving up on the North or whatnot. Do you have a point to prove this this Port Adelaide career now to show them that you're you know a committed. AFL yeah, I, look, I'm, um, I come in, coming to the AFL wanting, wanting to be, wanting to be the best, and um, you know that's still where I'm striving for. And I think, um, yeah, I think um, it's a, um, yeah, I just want to try and be the best I can be, and I think this this environment's going to help me. And um, you know, I wouldn't say a point to prove, but um, I kind of just want to want to prove it to myself and my family, make make them proud. Um, so yeah. What's the reaction been from, I guess, you know, Ed's teammates at North Melbourne? I think Cam Zerha was kind of posting on Instagram about, about some stuff. Yes, I mean, what's the kind of reaction been from them? Um, oh, look, I think it's I think it's a bit of fun games. Um, you know, me and Cam, I thought we had a, we had a um, you know, decent relationship, so, yeah. Just in terms of, I mean, stuff, interactions with teammates, we've seen everything. We haven't heard you speak, so there's one side who's saying this, the other side is saying that you're so competitive with almost... Um, sort of hold you back and how competitive are you in that sort of strength about you? Yeah, I'm um, very competitive. I mean, <laughs> you could probably thank my pop for that. My pop, um, we used to we used to play a lot of a lot of pull back in the day and he used to never let me win in that. So, um, you know, I'm really competitive and no matter what I do, I really want to win. So, um, you know, I'm really, really hoping this year um, that we're going to have a, have a great year. So, um, yeah. Mate, which Port Adelaide players in particular, you're looking forward to working with, and perhaps with some midfielders in particular. Yeah, I think I can learn off a, a lot of a lot of them. Um, you know, Bokey's I think 35 years old, coming up too. I think so he's 45. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, he's really experienced. I think I can learn a lot of him. But then also the you know the mature ages coming through, like um, Connor and Zach, and all them all them type of um, you know players. I can learn a lot of them. Where do you fit in? Would you like to see yourself playing round one first bounce or do you think it's going to take you a bit of time? Have you got any idea at all? Yeah, look, I, I, like I said, I was going to try and respect of players and, and coaching staff and um, if that means um, me playing round one, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy. But, um, you know, I'm just going to train hard and um, do, be the best I can be and try and impress everyone. What were your conversations with Ken like? How did he kind of sell the club to you? Um, yeah, look, Ken was really, he was really good. He was... Um, it was a lot about um, kind of 
what we can do to make the environment um, good for me and and get the best out of me and f to play my best footy. Um, so that was really, really good for us, me and my family, to hear um, of how he wants to help help me and get me to the best, be the best player I can be. So um, yeah. You, you, you admit that there's been some things that you might do different and get your time again. What have you learned over the last year? Do you think that was put you in really good stead now to go forward? Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, you know, it's footy's played a lot of a lot in your head. My dad's always told me that. Um, so yeah, I've learned that. It's there's a lot, of, lot of, lot of to the mental side instead of just going out there and play footy. You know, you're not a 50 year old, 15 year old kid that can just go out there and play footy anymore. You got to, you know, prepare for it. And um, yeah, you can't just run out there and play footy. So I think that's that's probably what I've what I've learned. You got to, um, you know, I saw some psychologists, um, you know, throughout the year, and that really helped me. So um, yeah. What about the idea of playing the showdown? Is that too good? It's really exciting. Yeah, I, I. Um, you know, you always watch watch the showdowns as a um, like as an Adelaide kid, and you always, I guess, dreamt to be out there and playing it, and um, you know what it would be like. Um, so yeah, I'm really really excited. How does it sit with you to sit next to a, a foot boss like Chris saying that you know we think we've brought in to the club a, a possibly generation of talent? How does that sort of weight sit on your shoulders? Um, oh, I mean, I wouldn't take it so much as as way. I just um, you know, it's it's. It's honoured to be, I guess, talked about like that. But um, yeah, like I said, I just want to be the best I can be, and I think um, you know all the Chris and all the coaching staff want, want that for me as well. So um, yeah. No. Have you got an idea of how good do you think you can reach at some point in your career? Is that me? Yeah. Um, uh, look, you know, you always joke around it when you when you're a young kid. And, um, you know, I always joke around it with dad, but yeah, I, I. I Oh, I mean, hopefully one day could be the best player in the competition. Um, that's that's probably that's probably my goal, um, and I think I have the, the the great support network and people around me that I can that I can um, hopefully do that. But if that's not the case. Um, just be the best best I can be, and um, you know, try to work the hardest and, and do my best all the time. Yeah. See, so, yeah, just to get um, <coughs> and without having to give up any players. Yeah, look, it's it's really important. I mean, we were we were really clear from the start of the trade period, and clearly, no one believed me. But uh, we we didn't want to lose any of our talented players. Uh, and from that perspective, I think Jason Cripps has done a, a fantastic job to keep you know an existing core group of young players. As I say, we've taken you know, seven first round picks in the last three drafts. There's only Gold Coast and GWS, I think, who have taken more. So you know, we're really excited about that young group of guys, and Jason obviously you know, adds to that. Um, so to not lose any of those younger guys is, is a real uh, achievement, I think. It also says something about the club that none of them wanted to actually go because it would have been a, an easy period of time for them to, to put their hand up and say that they might want to go back. So I think you know, Cripper's done a, a fantastic job there. And, and as you say, I, mean, I don't want to gloss over Junior because he's a significant uh, addition to this footy club as well. So, you know, couldn't be more pleased that, you know, he's another guy who has said that he wanted to come to Port Adelaide, able to get the deal done. Um, you know, he's training away up in Darwin at the moment, uh, and I'm sure that, you know, we'll give him uh, as well the best opportunity to, to be as good as he possibly can be. Because, just, oh, because the group is so young, because they've got so many young players, is it kind of easy, I don't know if it's easier to, you know, trade out a bunch of your picks for next year, given, you know, the age of the group? Yeah, well, as I say, we, we've we've taken seven first round picks in the last three drafts. So anyone who suggests that you know we're we're all in on um, giving all of our picks away would also need to look and say, well, but they have replenished you know their young group of players over the last period of time. So uh, yeah, we, we were comfortable trading the picks that we did. We obviously got a few back as well. So it's not as though you know, we've only not got our first round pick next year. So. Um, you know, we've still got 33 and 60 to go to this year's draft with. Um, you know, we, we've put 33 on the table for Asava Radigalia if Geelong wanted to take that. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the next you know, 36 hours goes. Are you Have you confident that'll go through? Yeah. Are you confident that could go through the sale? Uh, I'm confident that we've offered something that's fair. So at the end of the day, you know, Asava is contracted at Geelong and and Geelong have the prerogative to do whatever they want. You know, he's, he's clearly said that he wants to come to Port Adelaide uh, and he's told Geelong that he wants out. Now, whether that means that they end up trading him or not is a, is a different kettle of fish. But, uh, 
yeah, we're confident that we've put our best foot forward in that negotiation as well. We've just seen Brody Grundy switch clubs for not a lot for a player that caliber five years ago on his deal. Why, why a six year deal for Jason? I mean, that's probably against where the, a lot of the market is heading. Well, why is such a long term deal? Well, there's, there's a few parts of that. Number one, our list profile doesn't have too many players who are contracted out too far. Um, you know, Dan Houston is the one who is contra contracted out as far as anyone in our club. Um, you know, we, we have an extreme belief in, in Jason um, and we think he's going to be a, a player for a long period of time. So, you know, contract length in that sense, um, you know, we're really comfortable with. In all of these things, it's a balance between, you know, what the player is getting paid and the, the length of time that they've got. Um, you know, we're, we're really comfortable, even though you know, some people in the media aren't necessarily Kane, um, who uh, <laughs> sent a special message to. Um, uh, we know that, you know that, that there's scrutiny on those deals at the moment. Um, we're really comfortable with where we're at. Is Asava the potential for Asava? Is that going to be the only real um, thing you might get? I think for us now, um, you know, obviously getting, getting Jason and Junior in was a, was a massive tick for us. We, we entered the period also with Asava on the um, on the line, so yeah, we're hopeful that that gets done. If it doesn't, we're happy to take 33 into the draft, and and we'll go from there. Riley Bond, does he stay? stay yeah, I think I think right now, for where Bonds and, and also Sam Hayes, who there's been you know some noise around, I think both of those guys stay, and we're really really pleased that, um, as I say, that we haven't yeah we, we value Riley and Sam. Um, where we see them in the team is obviously, and where they ended the year is um, is another thing, but. You know, the, the reality is right now we're really comfortable with our group. Not a trade, but Francis Evans was the last one. Um, yeah, look, I think that right now, I think Frankie wants to, to come to Port Adelaide. So whether that happens through the, the, the trade period or whether it happens through the delisted free agency period, I think that uh, without going too far on that, I think we've got a want for him to come in and I think right now he would like to come here.